Holy Spirit. Amen. Those of you who were diligent students when you were in uh, Sunday school, you remember that John the Baptist is the cousin of Jesus Christ. And he was a man who was extremely ascetical. Uh, he went out in the desert to find the Lord. He went out to pray and to fast and to struggle with his own life in order to be free enough to take that understanding of the Lord to the people. And John had enormous followings. They came, sometimes they said, as many as 2,000 people following him to hear what he had to say. Because in those days, the Jews were under the, the yoke of the Roman Empire, and even in their own land, they were subject to others. It was difficult. And so they were looking for someone to give them the way out. And so they hoped that John would do that. And Christ came because he heard John was baptizing people. So he came to the river where John was doing the baptizing, and he wanted to be baptized. And of course, St. John was shocked, and he said, how can I baptize you? You're the Lord. I mean, you don't need to be baptized. But as we know, we will celebrate the feast soon. And the Epiphany, he was baptized. But when I was reading this gospel again, and I've heard it many times, and I'm sure you all have as well, it reminded me of a wonderful priest when I was a young kid. And I said to him, I think I was in fifth grade, and I had a big mouth then as I do now, and I, he gave a little class for us. He came over and taught the class in school, and then afterwards he said to me, can you carry all this stuff over to the house? I said, sure. So I, I walked with him, and I said to him, how could it happen that nobody really knew who Jesus was and very few people knew who John was, and how could it happen that from that the whole world eventually found out? And how did it spread the way that it did? And it seems unlikely because, you know, we hear things, we get very excited about things, and then six weeks later we remember any of them. We go back to our old ways. So how did it make it all these thousands of years? He said to me, did you ever eat an apple? I said, well, of course. And he said, was the apple good? I said, most times. He said, did you ever think about the seeds in the apple, how many seeds there are? I said, no. I just ate the apple and I avoided the core. I didn't eat the seeds. And he says, well, I always eat the seeds. And he said, but you know, when you think about it, how many seeds are there in that apple? And I'm wondering, what is he getting up to? And he said, John the Baptist was given the seed of the truth by God. God implanted in him the truth. And by doing that, he was like, an apple that was rich and wonderful, but contained all these seeds. And nobody knew how many seeds or how many trees would come from those seeds, who in turn would produce greater and greater and greater numbers of apples. And that's, he said, how the faith went. That the Lord implanted, God implanted in John the Baptist and in Christ, and they implanted the seed in others. And then that seed grew into other trees that grew more apples, and it spread all over the place. And I always thought that was an incredible analogy because I wouldn't have thought of that, but uh, when you think of an apple tree, we don't think that tree is filled with apples and lying within those apples are seeds that will give more trees, more seeds, and more fruit. That's how we have to live as Christians. We have been given the seed. It has been planted in us, but we have to bear good fruit and grow more trees and spread that reality. Not just keep it for ourselves or let it die and wither up and disappear. Oftentimes, we just don't even pay attention to it. We say, it's in there, so what? Or we don't even think it's in there. We just go on our way. But you have the grace of your baptism. You have the grace of taking Holy Communion, the body and blood of Christ. You've been chrismated. You have lived in the church. You have gone to the liturgy. You have many seeds within you to plant not just in yourself, but in others, and spread the holy faith. It doesn't happen by itself. It needs to be planted, and then planted it needs to bear fruit and give it to others. That is our task. And today, we are hearing that we must let those seeds nurture, take root, and they must be able in turn to bear good fruit, which will bring more and more people to understanding the truth of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.